Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the FSW Time Domain Power Measurements. In this presentation, we'll explain how to make power measurements in the time domain using a Rodin Schwartz FSW Series Signal and Spectrum Analyzer. This presentation assumes a very basic understanding of time domain power and how it's measured using a spectrum analyzer. If you're unfamiliar with time domain power measurements, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Time Domain Power Measurements before beginning this presentation. Time domain power is one of the standard spectrum measurements on the FSW and is supported on all FSW series analyzers. As the name implies, this measurement is used to determine signal power in the time domain, as opposed to the much more common power versus frequency measurements typically made with spectrum analyzers. Since this is a time domain measurement, the FSW uses zero span mode to measure power at individual points across a sweep. By default, this power is measured using the sample detector. Measurements can be made over the entire sweep or only over a limited part of the sweep. The power results are then displayed both graphically and numerically and can be given as peak power, mean power, and or RMS power along with the standard deviation. To start a time domain power measurement on the FSW, press the Measure Hard key and then select Time Domain Power from the list of further measurements. This is a standard spectrum measurement and does not require any additional hardware, software, or license code. This is the main time domain power measurement screen. Configuration settings are accessed via the buttons on the right. The default view both shows graphical results as well as numerical results beneath them. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to configure the measurement parameters and interpret the result displays. But first, we need to discuss triggering, which is used in zero span to freeze the signal on the display for viewing and for making measurements. In other words, triggering is used to acquire the region of interest and or to provide a stable representation of a repetitive signal. The FSW supports a variety of different trigger types, including external triggers, video triggers, and IF or RF power triggers. The trigger type used will depend on the measurement setup and the signal type, and in many cases, Acceptable results can be obtained using any one of these trigger types. Another trigger-related parameter is trigger offset, which can be used to shift the position of the trigger point. This can be used to center the area of interest on the display, for example, moving a pulse to the center of the screen rather than having it appear on the edge. Triggering the signal and using an offset are important because by default, time domain power measurements measure over the entire displayed span or sweep. However, in the vast majority of cases, we're usually interested in measuring power only over part of the sweep, and creating a sweep to exactly match that area or region can be quite challenging. Therefore, limits can be created and activated in order to measure only over a user-defined time range. A left and right limit are entered as times, and this becomes the evaluation or measurement range. Let's look at a typical time domain power measurement result. By default, the top of the screen shows a graphical representation of power versus time, and any configured limits will be shown in red. Numerical results, either for the entire sweep or within user-defined limits, are displayed in a table at the bottom of the screen. As mentioned earlier, measurements can be given in the form of peak power, RMS power, and or mean power, as well as the standard deviation. Standard deviation in time domain measurement results indicates how much power changes over the defined measurement period and is calculated relative to the mean value. Greater values of standard deviation indicate greater variability in signal power. For example, a pulsed signal with a relatively constant power over the measured interval 
will have a very low standard deviation. Small amplitude variations, or ripple in the pulse, will increase the measured standard deviation. And, if there are substantial changes in amplitude over the duration of the pulse, the standard deviation may be quite high. One final thing to know about time domain power measurements is that usually an evaluation range or limits are used to measure the on period of a signal. For example, here the limits have been set to measure the first time slot and obtain the power within that time slot. However, it's also possible to define the evaluation range in order to measure the muted, blank, or unused time between active or on periods. In the example on the right, limits have been configured in order to measure the amount of power present in an off period, that is, within an unused time slot between active slots. Let's end with a brief summary. Time domain power measurements are standard spectrum measurements supported on all Rodian Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzers. In most cases, time domain power measurements are used to measure the power of so called bursted or pulsed signals, such as radar or time division duplex communication signals. Time domain power is measured in zero span mode, and like most zero span measurements, a trigger is needed to obtain a stable power measurement. By default, a time domain power measurement will measure power across the entire span, or sweep, and most often limits are defined in order to measure only over a user-defined time range. For example, only measuring over the on time of a pulse. Measurement results are displayed graphically by the FSW, and the user can also choose a number of different numerical measurements to display. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the FSW, Time Domain Power Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about time domain or other spectrum measurements, or about spectrum analyzers from Rodian and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.